Oh, sorry about the actual a week delay when it comes to the forms of the continuation of this Let's Play. Because of that though, I just really want to get this out of the way right now. That because I'm recently playing through Paper Mario the Okami King recently. So as a result, yeah, it has been about a week since I've last touched upon this. So, hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen? I'm Piglet here once again and I'm back for some more if yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Pac-Man World 2 for the Nintendo GameCube, PlayStation 2, PC, and Xbox. So, last time we have managed to able to fully completely done with the forms of the lava themed world, despite that once again I'm off by one pack dot left in terms of the 100% completion, in terms of volcanic panic, and um, aside from that though, we also managed to beat the likes out of the forms of Blinky, or Clyde as where it's mistakenly named, for the sake of this game itself, and we did manage to beat him, uh, no problem at times, but only a little bit difficult in some scenarios. So today, we're about to begin on to probably my least favorite world in this game, which appears to be the water world. Now, do you remember any forms of Pack Dot Pond that uh, we did technically already did done some swimming before? Well, we now have to do this a lot for the sake of this world. And plus, uh, taking a notice from the likes of Sonic 06 Mark Speed sections or something like that, there's no way you can able to turn around and turn back for it, because uh, otherwise you'll be ended up missing some a lot of collectibles like the Pack Dots, Fruits and Namco tokens, and most importantly, they got uh, the Galaxians themselves. But to be more specifically, between this stage as well as uh, the next level coming up, uh, those two levels only has uh, one Galaxians each. Because compared to the third level, which we'll get into later, that's oh my god, I found that level to be kind of boring to be honest. Especially noticeable how the fact that I can definitely see why most people seem to really still despise this world so much because it was so slow. But apart from those aside of things though, it might not be so bad, but it's just that, well, for the sake of clarity, as you can see on this first level on this world, which appears to be Scoopa Duper, uh, basically there's going to be a lot of hazards that you need to avoid, such as, for instance, this well out of place, um, uh, tent like uh, you know, bombs, as far as I like to point things out. Especially noticeable with the actual, um, the actual balloon bombs, as you saw. And also, to top it off, there's gonna be a lot of sea creatures that are about to attack you. Such as, of course, these electrical eels, sharks, and worst of all, the jellyfishes. Which, kinda makes me wonder about the fact that in the Spongebob universe, that, uh, the jellyfish is the actual main threat to them throughout the sake of time. But I digress. So... Yeah, you know, as I mentioned this to you earlier, it's the fact that it has been about a week since I've last touched upon this game. This is clearly because of how the fact that recently on Thursday, that um, some toys else did recently finally manage to deal with the forms of the next video game collection video for the longest time actually, which appears to be this time around the Nintendo Switch. Since after all we actually got more games every now and then for the Nintendo Switch platform, so as a result it has been a very very long time since we actually now finally did done a brand new video game collection video which has been about three years three whole years since the wii u game collection video despite that well we might able to point out some brief updates or something like that for that matter but let's not get ahead of ourselves at this point just yet because either way I'm still mainly focusing on this from now on, and until when it gets to the point until on this first day, we can able to actually just wrap things up with this particular game and train at some point on this first day, so... Yeah, that's how it goes, basically. And sadly, I just got killed by the electrical eel, and, uh, because you have no, uh, control over your character sometimes, but either way, though, that's all I can say about it here. So, uh, today's day is of course the, uh, the 21st of July, in this case in 2020. So not much else has been talking about this up, up until this point. Well, apart from the fact that recently we still managed to get ourselves the, uh, you know, the Paper Mario or Gummy King, after all. As a matter of fact, that Mario and Sonic has already mentioned about that. Since Journey Films have been the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 Let's Play. So yeah, as a result of that kind of stuff, though, they'll talk more about the actual, um, the first impressions of it, and doing that self-point until tomorrow. 
because uh, to be more specifically, whenever they get their, uh, their own time. So as a result of that kind of stuff though, yeah, that's all I can say about this here. So I get a feeling that we're almost nearly at the end of the level for the most part. Although, as you can see, I can definitely see the actual familiar item in the distance, mainly with the forms of the Galaxian and stuff like that. So thankfully, we did manage to obtain that, and that way we can able to do it once again in maze, so... Now, unlike in the ones and how it does it in, uh, to be more specifically, Blade Mountain, is that I don't think we can able to swim around the maze. Unless, unlike the ones in, uh, um, you know, the ones in, uh, the Pirate World from Pac-Man World, uh, basically we can able to actually have the ability to swim during the actual maze. I think it was in, uh... Corsure Slayer, or something like that, and um, as a result, they can able to actually just to swim underwater in a maze. Well, so in this game, this time around, though, you pretty much guaranteed able to walk on the surface. So, yeah, as a result, acts like a maze, basically. So, even then, though, there's not much else that can really uh, confess by this point. Oh, yeah, something's worth mentioning, too, is the fact that that particular background music you're going to be hearing, uh, that will able to actually bring it back in Journey Forms of the Game Boy Band's version of the game, or in this case, a GBA version of Pac-Man World 2, but for whatever reason, they just used that on the first world, which appears to be Pac Village and the Bear Basics, and just like any forms of Pac-Man World 1, um, basically the amount of levels that's been, like, uh, cut out in the Game Boy Band's version, which I've no idea why they actually just managed to cut it out in the first place. So yeah, as a result of that kind of stuff, though, it just makes no sense to me, but that's probably just me. Oh okay, yeah, something's worth mentioning too is the fact that, um, you know what the actual special like maze is that we're able to actually come across into? Um, the only ones they did, they did manage to have themselves all three of these mazes in one world, which are, I think it's like, uh, treetops, or in the sake of clarity, um, you know, the forest world does have all three mazes, and, um, Snowy Ice Fiend World also has all three of those mazes, including the lava themed ones as well. So, as a result, that between uh, the grasslands as well as the uh, the ocean, or in this case, a underwater world, and even especially noticeable in the final world, which we'll get into in just any moment until, you know, on this first day in particular, so that way we can able to conclude. Uh, the entire let's play of this game, even though I, I wish I was lo I wish I would love to show you guys um, Some extra stuff of how this game offers us to specifically um, You know the arcade games that you might be able to play on especially noticeable with a little brief on uh, Time trials and stuff, but there's nothing right to hold about because as a result no much else you can say so as a result Yeah, ah oh, dang it. I hate when that ah oh, I hate when it helped the fact that when you uh we get like a ginormous hitbox with that particular explosion effect. Oh jeez, that was kind of cheap. And oh boy, whenever we get onto the forms of uh, the second level in this world, which appears to be, well I'm not going to explain things too much whenever we get into that. So yeah, as a result, another thing I would like to show off is the time trials, or brief moments in time trials, but there's nothing right to hold about, because basically it plays out exactly like how it did in terms of Crash Bandicoot 3 warps, whenever you do the time, trial, uh, time trials and stuff like that, um, you're able to actually obtain the clock item, and then when you touch the clock item, then you weren't able to actually activate the actual time trials without any checkpoints or anything. But here's the thing though, much like in Crash Bandicoot 3, you can able to actually obtain more time in terms of like the, uh, normally in Crash Bandicoot 3, that you can able to actually break boxes or break specific boxes in order to able to stop time for a little bit. Whilst the forms of this game, well, you can't able to actually just to eat up ghosts to able to stop the time for a little bit. And then also you can able to obtain those little clock icons so that way it will also stop the time. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty, you know, it plays out pretty similar to the likes of, uh, well, let's just say both Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped as well as, um, you know, Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex, because, you know, both games are pretty much exactly similar to each other, except with, um, unpolished, uh, development, uh, rushed, uh, development or something like that, so... But yeah, you get the idea for that. And as you can see, the next level we're gonna be hitting to is Shark Attack. 
and this is where the difficulty might able to start to ramp up ridiculously. Especially noticeable if you really want to go for 100%, most notably with, you know, getting all the pack dots in particular. Good luck with that, because you're gonna get hit a lot, specifically with a lot of, you know, enemies such as the electrical eels, and lots of jellyfish all over the place, and worst of all, it has not only the forms of those, <clears throat> Some random bombs they are trying to kill you, but also the la uh, the amount of missiles that you have to dodge as well. So that way, this is definitely one of the hardest levels of the game. At least assuming if you're able to, you know, trying to get, trying to achieve, rather, the 100% on, because as a result, you're gonna die a lot. And plus, not only that, it could be the live trainers as well. But if you somehow get a game mode with that, luckily, unlike the ones in Pac-Man World 1, that I suppose that Duffy has not even mentioned about this, or did he did? I don't know. But as a result, um, unlike the first game, whenever you save the game, and then as a result, if you, uh, depending on how much lives you gathered, let's just say if you have like one life left, and then if you get stuck onto something, specifically um, the hardest boss in the game, which is just, you know exactly what I'm talking about, is Anubis Rex. And then if you get a game over, then you expect you weren't able to actually get yourselves five lives back, right? Wrong. Turns out about the fact that you, uh, the amount of lives you have from this uh, previously saved game, uh, you'll be stuck with the amount of lives that you can get. Whilst unlike the ones and how it does it on the game, well, at least luckily you can able to actually uh, get uh, get to replay those uh, bonus games if you feel like trying to do some more extra lives farming. But compared to the Game Boy Advance version, you can't because as a result, it just makes the Game Boy version uh, the Game Boy Advance version a lot more a pain than the likes of how it does it on the console version. So. At least in this game this time around though, it's the fact that every time you uh, get the game over, uh, thankfully your lives will be reset to 5, so at least we're very glad that that's been fixed. So yeah, as a result of that kind of stuff though, yeah, that's what I can say about it here, so... Another token right there, and I got ambushed by the forms of... I don't know what um, hazard that I seem to manage to get hit by, but I'm pretty sure it's likely a missile or something, but... Either way though, that's kind of a nuisance. Plus, this level can't be a bit too much in terms of the forms of chaotic uh, hazards that are trying to able to force you to deal with right there. Especially in this missiles case, they just they just place all over the place, you know. Even whenever they uh, always catch you off guard in certain patterns and stuff like that, and it's just all over the place, you know. Oh boy. Oh jeez, I have no health left. Oh, there's a health wedge right there in the distance, but I somehow accidentally got hit by those, you know, these balloon bombs and stuff. That's just pretty, that's just stupid. Hopefully, third time to charm to able to get past for this point. Yeah, this is definitely the hardest level in the whole game because of how the fact that depending on what uh, situations, what this is considered, then you're gonna get hit a lot, for the sake of clarity here. And I don't think there's any way we can able to actually get an extra life back until at some form or another, but jeez Louise, this is too much. Even to make matters worse, it's the fact that, as I said this before already, the hitbox, uh, the hitbox between you and the explosion is actually way too big. So as a result, you're gonna get hit a lot, so... Oh jeez. But thankfully, we're still stuck on the exact same checkpoint as before, so, but even then, there's not much else to really just come by. It's actually pretty impossible to dodge this particular missile right there, which I can assure to you because of how the fact that that's how challenge goes, basically. Alright, something's worth mentioning too is the fact that, yes, much like in certain other Let's Plays, specifically for Maxi Maxi 10 version, most likely. For whatever reason, he decides to cheat on its own. Specifically, he utilizes infinite health, infinite amount of lives, and overall, it's just cheating. So as a result of that kind of stuff, though, yeah, that's what I can say about it. Speaking of the lives counter, actually, for the sake of this game, I suppose mainly, just like in the forms of Pac-Man World 1, that you can able to actually get your lives counter up to 100 or more, which I can assume that's what that is, so, but even then, it has been ages since actually coming back into this game in particular, especially after playing through 
a lot of games on my own time. As I said before, we played, uh, you know, Paper Mario, the Ogami King, and all that stuff. So even then, though, as well as, um, you know, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, in case if I got stuck in certain uh, games specifically. Like, for instance, at the moment right now, I recently master uh, continuously playing through uh, Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle so far. And so far, I'm still stuck on wall 3-4 because, oh man, the amount of times I was going to able to deal with the forms of those, the, my, I, I suppose to me though, one of my least favorite enemies of the game was actually Smashers, because not only does it able to actually just do, well, every time you attack them, then they'll just come straight towards you, and then attack you in a process with the biggest amount of damage as you can pull it off, but also, every time in the other variations of the Smashers, and so when it gets to point in World 3 and onwards, it gets really annoying, because every time whenever they utilize their special um, abilities and stuff like that, oh man, I got wrecked, I got PSP robbed by the forms of the amount of damage that the Smashers can instantly manage to kill me, even like killing Mario as a result for that matter too. And as a result, I got quite a few game overs. I think this is probably because of two things. Certain types of enemies you ever encountered, especially as I mentioned earlier, the Smashers that I'm always not a big fan of, and to be more specifically though, it's the fact that the, strate the strategy I always attempt to perform is gone terrible. So as a result, my strategy just went off, and as a result, I still enjoy the game, don't get me wrong, it's just the fact that the strategy on that specifically for strategizing for yourselves to able to do it properly, I just found a couple of mistakes on it, so as a result, yeah, I need to take a break on that game for a while, until I ever I get back into it, until god knows, until mainly in August sometime, or even in this case, if I manage to complete several other Nintendo Switch games on my own time, specifically, uh, you know, as I mentioned this before, playing through not only Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, but also um, Paper Mario the Origami King. So, yeah, that's why I can really must confess for that point. Plus, I can now finally play the Paper Mario game on the go, just like in Sticker Star, even though despite the fact that people really hated Sticker Star for one noticeable reason, that is the fault of, well, pretty much everything, including the actual, uh, the lack of creativity, and all the other jazz, as you know. And unfortunately, I died right there, as soon as what that missile was about to attack me right there. Yeah, seriously, look at it. It's pure chaos. But anyway, we got ourselves three melons, as you see right here. So, at least we got ourselves our health back. Please let it end. Oh, jeez Louise. Ah, there it is. There's the end of the level right there. Whew. Jeez Louise, that was something else. Especially noticeable, as I said, as I said this before, this level is pure chaos. Which, as a result, it will cost you a lot of lives every time you ever to die and during incoming, like, surprise attacks on you, like these torpedoes and, well, to be more specifically, missiles or something. And especially noticeable with, uh, you know, bombs coming from above and all that jazz. So, but even then, though, um, yeah, it's surely a something, so. At least we did that pretty good, though. 86%, not too bad, but could have gone a little bit better. Especially noticeable how the fact that I keep on getting hit a lot by a lot of hazards, as you know. So anyways, here we are at the forms of most people found this to be one of the worst levels in the game, which I honestly agree, but it's just, it's just only for one level specifically to me though, that I think I absolutely dread it the most. And that's what appears to be by the forms of Yellow Pack Marine, which, think of like how it does in the forms of the previous two levels that we've already done, well, except rather than just able to swim, instead, now we can able to utilize with the Yellow Pack Marine. So yeah, it's pretty cool, that will be the only coolest part about this level, but sadly, that's not the case for able to hold up for this level to be one of the greatest, because as you can see, we're about to be slowly strolling from the actual main portion of the level, and also as a result, um, well, unlike in any other levels of the game, that took like uh, sometimes three minutes or so, or sometimes six minutes, depending on what uh, you know your 100% completion will be resides. This level took about let's just say eight or more, depending on your death situations, because as a result, yeah, you're gonna get hit a lot on this level as well, due to the forms of multitude of things. Like for instance, the draw distance wasn't nearly as strong. 
but at least you can able to see what's coming up up ahead when you're able to continuously moving forward, although you'll be moving the entire time. Whilst, uh, um, another thing is worth mentioning too, is that unlike in any other levels that uh, there are some pack dots to be collected, this level right here is the only exception, because the only thing you can only collect is just fruit, um, health wedges and rare occasions, and also, to be, to be more specifically, extra lives on a rare occasion, and especially noticeable with these Namco tokens in there too. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm really sorry about this point, folks. Oh yeah, every once in a while though, as you can see, that we actually got ourselves one of those two power-ups for the Yellow Pack Marine. Such as, for example, we got ourselves a some sort of like a bomb that can be only activated once you press the circle button, and that way you can able to actually acti um, activate some sort of like a screen nuke, basically. And every time, whenever you use that, then it'll be able to, to destroy everything in your path, including bombs, enemies, and everything like that, so yeah. Pretty useful at one form or another, but the only thing is though is the fact that you only have to use it just once, so... And also as you can see on the top portion of the screen, that uh, we can only fire 6 missiles at a time, so that way you can able to actually just uh, take down a lot of hazards like bombs, and especially noticeable with these little sewer pipes and all that stuff. The only thing that's kind of bugging me for the sake of this level is that every time you get hit, sometimes for whatever reason, the actual screen was an attempt to shake. Which, as a result, it gets a little bit disorientating, especially noticeable how the fact that if you get cornered by a lot of, like, uh, annoying hazards, like the bombs or something, well, yeah, that can be pretty annoying whenever you're able to actually get hit by this stuff a lot. So, but even then, I could imagine if I was going to able to do this on time attack mode, or time trials, I should say, then it would be kind of frustrating to able to play through it sometimes. But that's how it is for me. Especially noticeable when if you think you're able to actually make it by this point, but yeah, as, yeah, as a result, it's not much else to really think of, uh, to be honest here. So, um, at least the music is okay enough, but it's just that it just feels like a slower paced version of that specifically. Yeah, that, that really irritates me, especially noticeable you would if you come across into more death situations like, um, you know, some more surrounding bombs. Also, this level is very stingy with checkpoints sometimes, because as a result, it appears to be exactly far away from each other this time around, as opposed to, like, like near towards us. Because unlike the previous platforming levels for sure, oh god, I hate this part. I absolutely despise this part in a huge passion. Because as a result, every once in a while, though, is the fact that most of these ghosts with these shark tanks or anything else for that resides, they're trying to ambush you a lot, which meaning about the fact that this is what the lock-on cursor comes into play. When every time you ever try to able to target it onto some ghosts else, then it's your chance to able to actually just to, well, simply try to able to aim for that specific stuff. But here's one my major gripe I have with this. Sometimes the actual torpedo launchers can go off way too fast, and you have to be so rely on the forms of the actual well, accuracy in mind, and especially to make matters worse, that if you somehow touch the previous checkpoint, right at the beginning, if you think you're going to be able to make it to the next checkpoint later on, oh my god, you have to go all the way back to that beginning portion of that level again, and that's why this level has become super stitchy with checkpoints to me sometimes, because of how the fact that it's actually gone way too far ahead, and also to make matters even much more... Uh, annoying than that is the fact that, well, you just have to able to go for a bit, not to die a lot, because otherwise you'll be pushed back. So, yeah, easily this is without doubt one of the worst levels of the game, which is sad, honestly, because even then, though, that, uh, you know, it's basically, it's kind of like, you know, the previous two levels that we've already done, but there's now too much uh, hazards to avoid while making them a little bit too hard. So as a result, it kind of reminds me of like one of those, uh, the worst water levels in Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex specifically, like, uh, usually in level 7 or something like that, so, but even then, uh, that's what I can really think about it for the time sake, so. Yeah, anyway, so yeah, uh, I think there's only like, uh, three fruits in total for the sake of this stage, so, yeah, I was thinking to myself about that as well, so. Alright, let's try this part again, and hopefully we should be able to pass this no matter what, despite I keep on getting hit most of the time, especially for those not only very unpredictable missiles to dodge, but also this very annoying 
uh, rattly thing has been going on of what's going on on screen because again if you get hit then sometimes the actual the actual screen will start to shake a bit which makes everything else disorientating for you for able to see where you're going as a result, yeah, this is probably is the uh, not only my least favorite stage in the whole game, but it's also it's one of the worst levels of the game, even for the entire game. As a result, I would say for the same thing as in the, uh, you know, towards the end of the game, but I'm not exactly sure for that because as a result, yeah, this is just this is just slow. And plus, not only that, though, it's the fact that, you know, the missiles, especially those of are super unpredictable to dodge sometimes. It's just too much. But anyway, yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot of cherries in this level, unlike apples and oranges. I think, I suppose, I can probably say that, uh, yes, there is some, um, you know, as I said before, a lot of Namco tokens to be hiding around here. But you have to be dead on with those as well. See, so, yeah, as a result, yeah. The collectibles can be a little bit of annoying to collect, though. Especially noticeable how the fact that this level tends to drag on every now and then. Especially noticeable how the fact that, while well, I can definitely see why, that most people seem to really despise this level so much, probably because of how the fact that how long this level can be. Especially noticeable how the fact that the length itself really doesn't help us out that much. So, and even uh, trying to collect everything in this stage, it's just a pure nightmare sometimes, especially noticeable how the draw distance is actually not that, you know, high or anything, so... At least we got ourselves a fire gun though, which is, basically you have to like, get yourselves like, uh, shooting for diagonal directions, which is pretty cool all in all. So, but even then though, well, the only downside with those weapons though is the fact that, well, specifically, uh, you only use it just once for as a screen nuke bomb, and um, as far as the, uh, the fire gun as a result, that's uh, it only lasted for about, let's just say, 6 seconds or so. I was expecting for 10 seconds or more, but oh well, it's not that big of a deal. So even then, uh, I'm really hoping this will be the last portion of the level, because otherwise, I'm getting so sick of this level, which as a result, don't get me wrong, the music is alright and such, but it's just the fact that I'm, I'm actually starting to get a little bit bored in this stage. Definitely one of the weakest aspects of the game, which is of course this particular level, which is sad honestly, because I just... Usually think that this level could able to work as a concept, but as far as the uh, the level's length as far as I'm concerned, it's just really dragged it on, you know. But anyway, let's just uh, get some more health before we're able to lose a another extra life. Oh boy. At least luckily though, if you do manage to able to destroy most of those balloon bombs, you can able to actually get your health back at least. But uh, still, the matter of the fact that you have to deal with a lot of uh, bullcrap stuff like this, you have to deal with this entire ordeal. And even if you really want to go for a time trials run, good luck, because as a result, you're going to get hit a lot. Even compared to the forms of shark attack, it's also pretty difficult as well. So, but even then, now that's all I can really must to confess by this point. Uh, something's worth mentioning too, is the fact that somehow you don't do time trials if you do boss fights, because usually, relatively speaking, uh, because of how the fact that most of the boss fights can take a, uh, well, a short amount of time or something, I have no idea what I'm trying to say for this point. Oh yeah, the smart bomb, that's what it's name. So, but even then, no, yeah, that's as far as I can say. It, yeah, it actually acted out like a screen nuke, but except... Well, you can only just use it just once, every time you use that uh, particular power-up, as you saw. But yeah, not much else I can talk about, sadly, apart from the fact that we're almost nearly at the end of this game, basically. I know it seems it kind of feels a little bit too short, compared to the forms of how it does it in, uh, well, specifically in Pac-Man World 1. And because of that, though, yeah, there's going to be a lot multitude of times about the fact that we're going to have to come across into... You know, a lot of death situations, especially noticeable that, at least I appreciate it about the fact that with the loading screens, as I mentioned earlier, but uh, every time you die, unlike in Pac-Man World 1, that uh, in Pac-Man World 1, if you somehow die, then you can able to actually respawn right where, either the beginning of the level, or in this case, if you activate that checkpoint, then you would able to dive right in straight away. Whilst in this game in particular, every time you die, well, not only do you have to able to wait for loading screens and stuff, it actually took about likely three seconds until you're able to get back into the actual current uh, progression of yours until you're able to actually just, uh, well, continue things on for this point here. So, 
but I like grass. Something's worth mentioning for this point, so... Okay, there's another extra life. Oh my god, what is going on? Oh! Dang it! I was so close, man. But luckily, though, we almost at the end, but... It's just the fact of the matter is that I'm just getting so sick of tired of this, man. And even though it's really bugging me, too, that I'm off by one uh, Namco token left by able to reach for about 100 or so. Which, as a result, yeah, it's likely not going to happen for the sake of this world. Until at some point on Thursday, that we could able to actually just to get more tokens if, if possible. So, as a result, yeah, that's what I can say bye. Please tell me this is the end. Please tell me. Is this it? Yes! Yes! It is finally over! Oh my gosh, that is the most slowest level I've ever played. But thank goodness it's actually over. Oh, wait. But, so, all in all, I actually got ourselves about 61%, so... Yeah, it doesn't seem like that much percentage, though. Alright, so let's move on to the next boss fight, and especially notable, the final level in the water world, and that is Whale on a Sub. And unlike in any other bosses for that matter, this boss fight act out pretty differently, because for one notable thing, all four of these ghosts are now on top, they are now on board onto the forms of the actual, uh, the, the Mega Whale contraption, as far as what the boss's name was. And second of all, is the fact that much like in uh, Yellow Pack Marine level, uh, once again you have to take control of the actual Yellow Pack Marine, which, thankfully, this will be the final time we're gonna be, we're gonna be able to actually use that particular uh, vehicle right there. And basically, in this entire battle, is the fact that we have to attack those little fan blades. And every time you do so, then you would be able to actually deal the amount of damage in a Mega Whale itself. Thankfully, there are some checkpoints here, just like the ones and how it does it in the normal regular boss fights. Except there was actually, there was gonna be, um, well, there won't be any checkpoints whenever you get onto this last part. Because, well, you have to do this four times in order to be able to deal with the forms of those fan blades, in order to be able to deal the amount of, you know, damage as a result. So yeah, you're gonna have to do that a lot for the sake of this battle. And plus, this battle can get pretty tricky, and also is kind of annoying it at the same time. Because much like in Yellow Pack Marine level, then you have to deal with the forms of that, you know, very stingy enemy pattern sometimes. At least, still, luckily, we got ourselves some checkpoints along the way. Especially noticeable if you don't feel like getting a tap bit more frustrated and during the forms of the, the middle portion of the level. And thankfully, this level wasn't nearly as long as, uh, you know, Yellow Pack Marine, because as a result, that level tends to drag. But yeah, that's what I can really think about it, so yeah, as a result. And also, this particular boss fight might actually be one of the hardest boss fights in the game, including, uh, you know, Clyde or Blinky for that matter, just for the sake of clarity, because of how the fact that with the different, uh, uh, kind of things to do around here, but yeah, that's as far as I can say about it. Alright, so let's go ahead and take down this next spinning fan blade, even though sometimes though- Oh my god, ah, oh, why is that bomb there? Ah, uh, oh well. At least we got a checkpoint though, so at least we still pretty much guaranteed to be safe around here, so. Oh yeah, something's worth mentioning too, is the fact that every time you utilize those missile or to torpedo missiles, as you probably gonna be using that a lot, well, the only bad thing about it is the fact that sometimes it gets like a weird uh, cooldown thing, which every time you're able to, uh, like, let's just say if you use all six of those missiles, it gets like a, some sort of like a temporary cooldown for the actual, uh, the torpedo reloading. I kind of wish there was actually a, a reload button in here somewhere to make things a little bit easier for ourselves to able to reload the actual ammo count. You know, kind of like how it did on Mario Party Advance. For, uh, you know, when you're trying to deal with, like, a uh, splatter thing, or the splatter ball mini game, if you're trying to take down mini Bowsers or Koopa Kids if you live in North America, so... But yeah, I kind of wish there was actually a reload button here somewhere. Oh my goodness, that was close. And, unfortunately, there was no checkpoint every time you're able to complete that segment, because we have to do this uh, for one final time, and as a result, yeah, this is where it gets a bit... Uh, nerf-wracking, especially noticeable when you get towards the end. 
But hey, on the upside though, we actually got some more health right here, so... Oh, really? Stupid ghosts. Alright, come on. Come on, hopefully... Oh, what?! I didn't fire a missile! Ah, uh, this takes me back all the way from the middle section, isn't it? Yep. Yep. I totally noticed that, because otherwise that... I think that's the perfect example of why. That's uh, why the checkpoint was not even there. Ah, uh, oh well. We'll try that again. Thankfully, it won't take me that long to able to actually get into the, uh... Well... The fourth and final section. But, uh, still, it's... It's can be kind of annoying at times, even if if you really want to like uh, try and able to do this. Well, chances are you have to do it, that specific stuff. But I just have no idea what I'm saying now, right now. But I digress. All right, so we've done the uh, the third phase, and now let's go ahead and take care of the fourth and final phase. But this time around, we have full health. So how's that for that, I suppose? But. Even then, uh, that, uh, this is something that this world I don't want to replay on. Unless if I was going to go for a 100% completion on my own time. So I was like, oh boy, what do I even think about that? But anyway, though, let's go ahead and deal with the final uh, fan blade, as you see. So hopefully, we're not going to give up on that this time. Especially noticeable with this uh, too much ghosts surrounding on me. With the actual tanks and stuff. So... And plus, this particular battle is going to be all about accuracy on angles in between most of these actual torpedo shots, as you see. So, there's going to be a lot of plenty of times when you have to do that a lot. So, yeah, that can be annoying at times. Alright, so hopefully he'll be done for good. Ah, oh, not quite, but we will do once we're able to refresh our, you know, missile ammo counts. And, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, okay, there we go. Whew! God, that that took forever. But anyways, we received the final golden fruit, which appears to be the golden banana. It kind of makes me thinking about Donkey Kong might be pretty jealous of that. Well, it's still when it gets to the point in Donkey Kong Country Returns, that uh, he will able to receive a golden banana due to that final world, or the special world for that matter. Spoiler warning, for those who have not played that game yet, you should definitely recommend it. So anyway, I think seemingly to say we're going to end things off here. So join me next time on Let's Play Pac-Man World 2. Here's the fact that we're going to be doing the final world in this game, which appears to be we're going back into a spooky themed world since Pac-Man World 1, but a lot swampier than before. So see you guys until on Thursday.